Right, we've got the record feature going. Gonna get our timer started. We will launch off into this. It'll take about 50 minutes or so. I wanna make sure that you have plenty of time to ask questions towards the end and go forward from here. So welcome to everybody. This is a webinar for MoGo. We're gonna be doing an application introduction today, showing you some of the features you can use in MoGo, hopefully some of the ways that you can get additional value out of it, some of the premium features, what those look like if you're considering uh, purchasing it, if you've downloaded the free version and you've been trying it, but you wanna see what the rest of the features look like, I'll touch on several of those today and hopefully be able to answer any questions you might have. So what are we gonna do today? We are gonna look through a number of features. By the way, my contact information is there. I am Isaac Garcia. You can contact me at that email or via Facebook as well. Look me up at GetMogo on Facebook. That's the quickest way to get a hold of me there. All right, so what are we gonna talk about today? I'm gonna to show you a few different features and uh, we're gonna have a, a bit of time looking at customer relationship management. We are going to look at communications, we'll look at the master calendar feature, and then the appointment feature. And I know there's a number of other features that we'll be looking at in future webinars or future video segments, but those are the ones we're going to cover today. And again, we'll have questions and answers throughout. You can either pop them into the chat window, or if you want to unmute and ask your questions, I'd be happy to answer them on the fly as we go forward as well. Okay, that being said, we're going to jump into customer relationship management. What does that mean and how does it look inside of MoGo? So first of all, customer relationship management is different from a mobile groomer standpoint in that you're not just trying to track your customer, which is the person, but you also wanna track the pet of that person that you're going to be grooming. And why is that important? Customer relationship management tells us that the best way to work with a potential client is to know information about them. And so obviously that's their phone number, their email, where they live. But in our particular area, we wanna also understand their pets. What size is their pet? What kind of hair coat? What, what other information might you wanna store about a pet? Why is that important? So that when you're engaging with a client, you're not coming in cold saying, hi, Mr. Jones, I'm here to see your dog. And that's all you have. Imagine if you have the dog's birthday, if you have the dog's coat size, if you have the last treatment performed on the dog, if you know about any conditions the dog's gone through and all that information tracked along with Mr. Jones, then that would be something to be very helpful. So let me go ahead and kick open our app. By the way, Mogo is primarily a mobile first developed application. So I'm gonna be sharing, there is a desktop interface, but I'm gonna be sharing from the phone application because it is primarily what MoGo was developed for and where you will experience the most of the features. So looking here at my phone, uh, what you can see is that uh, this is the landing screen when you open up MoGo uh, to use it. This is just showing a calendar, or not a calendar, excuse me, my appointments for the day. But I wanna know some information about my client. So I'm gonna hit this top button here and we are gonna look at customers first of all. So you meet someone, you make them your customer, what information can you store about them? We're gonna go into Bob Barton here. And of course we have the traditional information for Bob. We have his phone number, his email, his address, which is very important since we're going to his house to perform our service. But as you can see here, we're also able to track appointments. Previous appointments that I've had with him, I can add a new appointment from here. I can go back and look at his history. So imagine being able to say to someone, I notice you haven't groomed since last February or you haven't been around for X number of weeks or months. That's information that's useful when you're engaging with your clients. You can also add some private notes if you wanna say birthday of the person or you wanna throw in something for you and your groomers, then you can add those private notes here. Agreements. So we as groomers have digital agreements. Those agreements are, I promise not to hold you liable in the event that something goes wrong with the grooming, if there's a skin issue, a brushing issue, whatever that agreement might be. You're free to create your own agreement inside the tool, copy and paste the text, and then you'll have each person sign that they agree with your agreement before you start service. And so it's very handy that you can have a digital agreement tracked within the tool so that if a person hasn't signed your agreement, you're reminded when you create the appointment, hey, you need to send them a request to sign this agreement. And then you can do it digitally, they can sign it, send it back to you, and then it's stored with their profile so you don't have to do it again in the future. You can also add on tags, which we'll talk about a little bit later when we're looking at the map view. And then you've got a payment method. You know, what is the payment method this person's using? 
And then you have down here some preferences for each person, whether they're receiving auto messages, if we send them emails, unconfirmed reminders, how do we do that? What's the preferred dog grooming frequency? And if they have a preferred groomer. But we're actually gonna go back up here to the top because the most important, at least in my opinion, the most important tracking that you're gonna do is right up here at the top. And you see to the right of the photo of Bob Barton there, I have two dogs, or Bob, I have Tommy and I have Bully. You can also add cats if you're grooming cats as well, but primarily we're looking at dogs here. So he's got two dogs, one of which I put a picture, and I'm gonna tap on Bully there. This is all the information now that you can track for Bully, the dog. So I can put a picture in, I've got his name, his breed, I can track his birthday, whether he's male or female, what his coat type is, his weight, any behavior, if he's fixed, vaccinated, the expiration date of those vaccinations, comments, and then maybe even a pet's passed away. You might have been grooming a pet for 10 years and then you lose that pet and you wanna make sure to remember, oh yes, that pet was with this person and you wanna have that reminder. You can have the history of it all there. So again, when you contact this person, when I contact Bob here, I know what his pet situation is without going, now, Bob, what kind of pets did he have? What were their breeds? When were they born? Uh, what was their temperaments? I have all that information stored inside the app. So when I have customers all over the city, lots of different dogs, lots of different dog types, I'm able to remember them accurately because I have their information stored here inside of the tool. And so where is that really helpful? Well, we have all of our customers down here. And let's say you're going to your appointment. And so I won't go too deep into this view. We'll talk about this particular view here in a second. But I'm headed out to this appointment with Bob Dylan. What I want to be able to do is quickly look and see, oh, Bob has Fido is his dog. And I can see the service that I'm giving Fido. If I tap on Fido there, I can actually get the information that I need for um, Fido. So I'm going to open up Fido. Here he is right there. And I can see his information. So it's very, very helpful to have all that information in one place so that you can go and look at uh, who the dog is, what the situation is with the owner. You can keep track of the relationship with them. And that's just incredibly useful when you're trying to relate to your customers in a way that um, makes them feel personally known instead of just, you know, you're just a docket number in my program, your customer 1127. That doesn't make anybody feel personal personalized attention, doesn't make anyone feel special. So you wanna make sure to treat your customers um, with respect as they go forward. So that's the customer relationship management section. I'll pause here for just a second to see if there's any questions about customer relationship management. Anybody? I don't see any questions coming through. Excellent. Well, we're gonna go ahead and move on then to our next segment here inside the app. Our next segment is communications. What are some ways that you can use Mogo to effectively communicate with your clients? So again, I'm gonna go back into the application. Let me share my screen from my phone. And what we're gonna see, I'm first of all gonna show you that there is a way for you to manage all of your communications in one place so that if you have multiple people, right? Multiple customers or multiple staff people that you're trying to synchronize your communications, you can all be saying the same thing. So right here, I've got my map view again. This is where everything launches from. But say I want to see what the conversation has been with, with this Bob Dylan person, one of my customers. I'm going to hit the top button and I've got this section here for message. As I go into message, what I can see is all of my clients and their past chat history. Now, whenever you communicate with someone through Mogo, Mogo manages the communication through their messenger system, but what actually arrives at the person's device is a text message. So let's open up Frank Fisher here. And so I can immediately see inside of Frank Fisher his conversation, just like if I've been texting him. Now, why not just text him? Well, two reasons. Primarily, number one, it's all inside the app. So all the conversation takes place in one place and you have it all stored. All that information is there. Another reason this is really helpful is that if you have more than one employee, if you have groomers that work for you, then you can all be sharing the same communication. There's nothing worse than one person saying, hey, what, what, did you, what kind of shampoo did you want for Daisy? And them saying, I would like this shampoo. And then someone else commenting, hey, what kind of shampoo did you want for Daisy? And them going, I already answered this question. Why are you asking me again? Because there's some miscommunication there. 
This way, all of your team members can see the conversation as it's unfolded. So looking here, I can see this conversation. Hey there, can't wait. Hey man, what's up this week? Nothing much, just watching the game. When are we grooming my sparkle? So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one and respond. Now any member of my team could respond, but I'm gonna to respond to this and say, uh, our, your appointment is coming up or something along those lines. So I'm going to type and talk at the same time. I'm gonna send this. Now watch what happens. I've, I've got this phone number linked up to my phone here. This Frank Fisher, whoa, he gets a text message. He's gonna open it up and sees, oh look, I got a text message from my friends at Mogo or whatever the name of your business is. And they say, okay, cool. So, so the end user gets a text and they text you back, you know, that sounds great. So they text you back, boom, and what happens? That text gets converted into Mogo's messaging. So here comes the Mogo message. I get a notification, oh, message from Frank Fisher. That sounds great. So you're having these conversations and on your side, you're just using your app. And on their side, they're using text messages. You can also integrate with email, but they're using text messages. It's an easy way to stay in contact with your people. Now you might say, okay, but maybe there's, you know, a time I'd wanna use a text message because I'm just chatting. Let me show you the biggest benefit of using this. It's called auto messages. And what that means is that when you are doing certain activities inside of Mogo's app, messages can be sent automatically on your behalf. And the goal of this is to decrease your administrative burden. So I've turned on auto messages for a new appointment is booked, an appointment is rescheduled, an appointment's canceled, unconfirmed appointment reminder. So if there's an appointment that's been scheduled, say, say I scheduled you six months ago, then you'll get a reminder one day before saying, hey, remember, got an appointment coming up tomorrow so that you, even if you've forgotten about it, you'll be reminded, pet birthday reminder, and even sending an ETA. Now, all of these messages can be customized. So let's say this new appointment is booked. If I tap edit message, I can see here from store name, that's my store name, client name, your appointment is booked for, and it'll send them the appointment time, and I just said from your friends. You can customize this however you want and put in these variables. So the benefit is you can create a personalized message straight for your customers that they'll see when a new appointment is booked. So you don't have to worry about, okay, I made the appointment in the tool, now I've gotta go send them a reminder that their appointment is made. So let's see this in action. I go back to the calendar view, I'm gonna go here to appointments. We're gonna make a new appointment for an existing client. And we're gonna use that Frank Fisher character here. He's got Lady as his wonderful dog. I'm gonna pull up Lady. Let's do a full service small, it's gonna be a 60 minute. Don't worry, I'll slow down on this in a second when we talk about creating appointments. What I wanna do is show you right now the notification feature. So I'm gonna create this new appointment right there for Wednesday. Boom, I'm done with that now. Whoa, a text message just came in. And it says from Agile Tech Coach, that's my grooming name, terrible name. Frank, your appointment is booked for, there's date and time from your friends. So now automatically, I made the appointment, boom, the message appears they've got it right there in their text immediately. Well, what if the meeting gets rescheduled, right? The appointment gets rescheduled right here inside the app, I can reschedule it. Let's say they text back, that time doesn't work for me. Okay, no problem, I'll look for the next available time. It's gonna be available on Thursday in the morning. I'm gonna say next, and I'm gonna notify the clients by message. And so what happens now, the client gets a message, oh, hey, your appointment is rescheduled for blah, blah, blah. They look at that and go, sounds good. Now, because everything was integrated inside the app, I'm going to be able to see a chat history that has the log of everything that's happened. And so that's a wonderful way for me to keep tabs on how this conversation is progressing and what each of the needs are. So here we go. So your appointment is booked and your appointment is rescheduled. I can see all that transaction happening there. All right, so now, Reminders, again, I'll go back to, you've got your appointment reminders uh, that can be sent out a day before. You can customize when those are sent out. Let's go back into auto message. I can say a day before, or I can choose any, any particular two days or three days if I wanna send a message up there. And you can send a time, of course, if you don't wanna send it too early to wake up the person. Some people don't like early morning text messages. All right, so those are the auto messages. One more thing about integrating all of your communication through the tool 
here I am out on my map, my route. I'm about to go to person number four, and I want to quickly connect with them. Well, if you have your phone numbers, you have to jump out, go find the phone number for this person, dial them. Inside the app, I see the person I'm going to. I've got an immediate button down there for contact. So I can just tap on contact. I can send him an ETA. So if I tap on that, then it's going to create for Bob Dylan. Hey, Bob, I'm on my way to you for Fido's grooming appointment. That's just a text message that I've created. Or I can say I want to call him. And if I want to text him or call him, I can just tap on that and the option opens for me to dial them straight away. So it's really useful to not have to leave the app. You can just do your communication for upcoming appointments right from inside of the app. So that's a very beneficial feature for the communications. So just to summarize some of our thoughts, what you have here is a unified communication platform. You're managing messages from one central place inside of Mogo the app, and it's going to the text of your clients. And so if you're sending them an ETA, simple text message, or all of our auto message features, what's happening is those are going directly to your client. And in the case of auto messaging, it's decreasing what you have to do as an administrator so that you can spend more time focusing on the things that really matter, which is grooming dogs, growing your business, improving your customer relations. All right, okay, so let's jump out of that. Let's go back over here to communications. We have summarized our thoughts there. And we'll wait for just a second to see if there's any questions about communications before we move on to our next topic. Any questions? Excellent. Seems we've covered that well. Okay. Our next topic we're going to look at here is the master calendar view. Now I told you I would show you this coming up. There were a number of things I previously glanced at, but we're going to go in a little bit deeper view here. What is the benefit of the master calendar? Well, it should be fairly obvious. Any kind of tool that you're looking for to manage your customers and your scheduling, you want it to be able to effectively manage the calendar. So we got to see all our appointments. A missed appointment is missed revenue. So we do not want to miss any appointments. I'm going to switch over back to my phone view. And we are going to bring it up. There we go. All right, this is the master calendar. This is the first and primary view, which is the map view. And the benefits of this is you can see where you are, as you see on the little blue dot right there, you can see where you are and you can see all of your appointments. What's really nice is they're all routed as your day goes. If I swipe through my appointments for the day, it can highlight where I'm going to, so that's appointment number two, appointment number one. So I see Tony Tim was up first. If I hit the up arrow here, I can see details of what I'll be doing there. I see there's two dogs on this, Bruno and Terry. And if I minimize that back down, I can swipe over and see Bob Jones. Any information about Bob Jones, I'm gonna be doing Sigma there next. And then if I go over again, Doris Day is my third, and she's got Sparky. And so you can see that information there. I've already touched on communications, but briefly, I'll just say, if you hit the contact button, you can send your ETA through the auto message system of Mogo. I can send a text, again, via the text message system. That'd be a custom text. And I can call each person. So it's all very handy right there. I see my next appointment, tap on contact, and I have ways that I can contact that person. Also available right there in the middle is directions. If I tap on that, it gives me the address. I can open either Apple Maps or Google Maps for directions to get me from point A to point B. So if I'm trying to get there, then I can just tap that. It opens up whatever your application is, and it gives you directions to get to that location. Also down here, you see the check-in button. That's gonna be very important when you're managing your appointments. We'll look at appointment details here in just a second. But uh, check-in is another feature that you can have right there. So that's the map view, which is our most useful view because it allows you to see your day all clean and pretty. But perhaps you prefer seeing the day agenda view. In the top right, you see the calendar little icon up there. I'm gonna tap that. This is your traditional agenda view. I can see what my appointments are blocked out and their information. And if I tap on an appointment, it'll open it up and give me the detail of those appointments. So that's another way you can view it. And then lastly, you can also even look at a monthly view. The monthly view looks like this and shows you what your days look like. It gives you a quick count at the bottom, how many dogs and how many cats you're doing, what kind of grooming you're doing. It can show all that to you there. So that's the monthly view. Go back to the map view. Again, a very popular view. 
and you can tap on different days to see what each day schedule looks like and how full you are on that day. I only have one appointment. Actually, I have a duplicate appointment at the same location on Wednesday. That's gonna be fun, back-to-back -back grooming. All right, now blocks. I'm gonna take you back over here to our calendar view. Let's say on Wednesday that all of a sudden I get a request that I'm gonna to have to be somewhere and I can't groom during a certain time. Well, here on the agenda view, if I wanna tap at a time, let's say 10 o'clock, I can add a block which a block is basically a reason that you're not gonna be able to do something. So let's just say I'm taking an early lunch, right? Because I'm meeting somebody else. Well, you can put these blocks in to remind you of things that are coming up so that you don't have appointments that are scheduled and times when you need to be available somewhere else. So those blocks are very, very handy. So as your week changes and evolves, if something comes up that you need to be free for, you can put a block in and then be confident that you're not gonna accidentally schedule an appointment when you should have had some time blocked. So it's very useful. Also, you'll notice here before nine o'clock, it's all kind of grade hash. And then as I go to the end after seven, it's also grade hash. That's a function of my hours that I work. And so if I look at my settings, up here in the top left and then go down to settings. When I'm setting up my business, one of the things I can set are my working hours. And so this gives you the opportunity to say, here's when I'm available and when I'm not available. And that lets you see in that view uh, what times are free for you, what times aren't free. All right, so let's look at one more feature here before we move on. And we'll look at this Carly Carson person because the feature is here at the bottom, it's called repeat. So let's say you have a customer that repeats their appointments every so often. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off repeat and we're gonna turn it back on so you can see what the engine looks like. So I've made this appointment and they say, you know what, put me down every week. I wanna have grooming every week or every two weeks or every three or four weeks. What you can do is you can open up this repeat feature and say, all right, and one, every one week on a Wednesday, Starting at that time, I wanna do maybe five appointments, or what I'm gonna do is say, I wanna end it by end of the year. So we're just gonna say all the way out through December 31st, this person's gonna have a repeating appointment. So if I do that, what's gonna happen is it's gonna preview the dates and make sure that all these times are available. If I book something three months out and I forgot about it, it would show a conflict on here that I'd have to resolve before I could create this reoccurring meeting. But there's no conflicts on this one, so those dates look good, so I'm gonna add, what it'll do then is it'll create a repeating appointment every week. So I only, can't, only have to create one and then it can repeat out. Now I'm sure what you're thinking is, well, how do you manage then making changes to that? Well, there's a couple of different ways to make changes. You can make a change to one appointment. So if one has to be moved, you can make a change just to that one. Or if the customer says that time and date no longer works for me, I need you to move it to a different date. You can change all the items in the recurrence so that they're all moved to a different time. So you're able to manage that repeat very effectively. And if you're fortunate enough to have repeat customers, then that's really the way that you can manage them without having to go out and create 10, 20, 30, 40 appointments. Now you might say, but wait a minute, in December, this person's gonna forget that we booked that appointment. Well, don't forget you have the auto messages that are gonna be sent out whenever you say. So if you say, I wanna send it out a day before that appointment, the person's gonna get a text a day before, even out in December, that says, hey, don't forget, you have an appointment coming up tomorrow or in two days, whatever you set for FIDO at this time. Please let us know if there's any problems with that. So it's a way of setting up appointments far in the future, but staying in contact right before the appointment so you don't get a no-show unexpectedly. It's a really great way to communicate with your clients and offer them service far into the future without you having to maintain all of the burden of tracking that and communicating with them right before their appointment. All right, lastly, I wanna show you one more feature on the map view. It's called the nearby feature. And this is incredibly helpful if you find yourself with a no-show or you're just saying, man, here I am in the middle of whatever part of town and I really would like to get a new client. So I've got this magnifying glass towards the bottom right of the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. And the nearby feature says, all right, so, give me a radius of five miles, or I can say whatever distance I want. I'll leave it at five miles. And somebody with their last service from zero to 30 days ago. Now, because this is a demo account, I don't have a whole lot of people, but I'm just gonna say all, so I can see all of my clients. Imagine if the last service was 
you know, 30 to 60 days ago or 60 to 90 days ago. I want to look for someone I haven't serviced in 60 to 90 days. So what happens, all these people pop up and you can tap on each of the dots and see information about them. Oh, so I see Bob Jones. He's in the vicinity. He's got upcoming service. But look here, there's this person just to the left that maybe hasn't had service in a while. I'm going to tap on them. It's Ethan Eckstein, and I haven't finished a service for him. So maybe my last service was a long time ago, or I've never actually groomed him. I can go, huh, well, I've got a bit of time. Let me take a look at this Ethan guy. Hmm, he's got one dog there, Pewter. Hmm, maybe I should offer to create an appointment for him. Well, I can either tap on his phone right there, and I can text him or call him. I can email him, but let's just say I call him and say, hey, Ethan, I was just in the area, and I found out that I have an opening and I'd like to see if you're interested. I noticed Pewter hasn't been in since, and I could look at the history, right, of what's going on there. March 16th was the last time we groomed Pewter. You know, after a few days, you need to get another grooming. And so Ethan says, you know what, that, that sounds good. I think I, I would like another appointment. We haven't been groomed in a while. Let's do it. So I say, great. I can tap on add new appointment. I'm going to pick Pewter there. I'm going to go ahead and say next. I'm going to add a service to Mr. Pewter. We're going to do a small service. And I'm going to select a time. And of course, if I had an opening specifically that I was looking to put him in, I can go put him there. This is saying, the smart engine is saying, I'm not really available to book this until Wednesday. But I can say to him, hey, how does Wednesday sound at 2.30? You could say, it sounds great. Or no, not really. Well, let me look at my next available time. I can cycle the next time. How does Thursday sound at 10.15? Thursday at 10.15 would be great. Awesome. I'll hit next and say add. And now what happens? He's going to get a text message that says your appointment has been booked. So you turn a potential lost opportunity of, man, I don't have anybody available right now for me to service. You turn it into an opportunity now for money because on Thursday, I'll be able to see that I've got that appointment scheduled. He's number two on Thursday right there. And so it's really helpful for keeping in touch with nearby. So you're sitting in your van, you need to grab somebody, or you know you're going to have an opening of a couple of hours, grab the nearby feature, find somebody close, go service them. Don't let any moments or opportunities slip away. Go get that service and make some money along the way. That's the nearby feature. All right, we're going to scroll back over here to our calendar, or not our calendar, but our screen. We talked about for master calendar, the map view. I showed you that. I showed you some of the features from the map view, the directions. We looked at the daily view, the monthly view. We reviewed blocks, the reoccurring feature, and even the nearby feature. And so that's what we have a master calendar. I'm going to pause right there, see if there's any questions from any of you before we move forward. Any questions? Nope. Then we will press forward on our grand adventure. We're moving into our next segment, appointments. We're going to be looking at appointments here and how to do appointments effectively inside of the tool. Now, you've got your calendar, you've got your communications, you've got your customer relationship management, but now how do we do appointments effectively? So we got our customer and we got information about the customer, but we got to sell that service. So let's take a look inside the app, what that looks like. Let me jump back into my device. And first of all, the first thing you'll have to do when you start using Mogo is you've got to set up your services. That's inside of your settings. You can go down here to services, and this is where you set up what you offer. Now, maybe you only groom dogs. Maybe you groom dogs and cats. Maybe you have specials, bath only, grooming service, add-ons, however you want to manage it. You are the one who creates what services that you're going to make available and the prices and how long it's going to take. And so you've got all that information that you can create inside of the tool. So now that you've set up your services, we got to create an appointment. So I'm going to go back to appointments, tap on the plus in the top right-hand corner. I can create a new client to apply this to, but I'm going to grab an existing client, save me a bit of time in the typing. Let's just grab this Dylan Dixon fella here. And Dylan Dixon has one dog. It's a very cute Superman. So we're going to give Superman some service. So for this appointment, I'm going to hit next. I got to pick a service now. What service do I want to give them? So I've got a grooming service for large, medium, and small. I've got bath only. Now these can all be customized, but I'm going to say we're going to do a medium bath. Oh, it's a puppy. We'll do a small bath. $60, it'll take 45 minutes. So I'm going to also go over to add-ons, and I'm going to say, you know what? It's a puppy, and it's a tender puppy. So we're going to add some extra care 
and we're gonna use some special shampoo. So just some added features, you can put these on a la carte. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those. So I've got a small bath, extra care special shampoo, it's gonna be $75, it's gonna take 60 minutes. Now when are we gonna do it? I'm gonna tap on that little button there. Oh, one thing you might have been noticing, but wait a second, didn't you say your small bath was 45 minutes? But notice that I also added in these extra care, which added an extra 15 minutes, just in case you thought our math was wrong on the amount of time that this was gonna go for. It adds up the time of all the services that you select. So now we've got it, 60 minutes, $75. When do we wanna do it? This is the smart engine now that says, when is the best time for you to do it? It noted that on Thursday, right after Ethan Eckstein's service, it's an 11 minute drive, I could fit them in at 11.30. Uh, maybe I like it, maybe they don't like it. I can hit the next available time, hit that arrow at the top. Next available time is gonna be Friday at nine. Maybe I like it, maybe I don't. Let's say I don't, I'm gonna do the next available time, it's gonna look at Saturday. There's some Saturday, maybe they say can't do it Saturday. Well, ooh, look, Monday, there's an opening on Monday. It's gonna be 11.45 right there, right after Dora. That's a winner, that's when we wanna put it, so we're gonna say next. And just like that, we have created an appointment. Now, this is the appointment detail. I can do a number of things from the appointment detail, and by the way, you can get to this a couple of different ways. Whether I'm on the day, I'm looking at it, whether I'm in the client, or if I'm just looking at the map view, I can tap on appointment detail and come into this screen. It shows me all the information about what we're gonna do. Up at the top, you see unconfirmed. I've got an auto message that goes out one day before that says, hey, uh, we've got a service coming up for your wonderful pet bear, Superman. Could you reply Y to confirm that you're good or N if you'd like to reschedule? And so the person will reply Y, yes, I'm good for that. Or if I call them and say, hey, does this time sound good to you? And they say yes, we can switch that over to confirm. They can do it through the text messages or you can do it outside of the text messages if you want to. I can cancel this meeting from right here. I can also reschedule it. If I wanna contact the person, I can tap on contact. Gives me the option to send an ETA, text them or call them. Shows me the time, when it is going to be, and then I have the details of the service. Small bath, extra care, special shampoo. All that information is right there in the appointment. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. There's a notice section here that you can remind yourself during the appointment. So if there's an injury on the pet or something you wanna remember, then you can remind yourself of that. Also, you have ticket comments. Those are things that are going to be for internal communication. So something that your groomers will share, but that doesn't end up on the, uh, on the actual invoice itself. And then repeat is if I wanna make this appointment a repeating one. So let's say he says, hey, I love that so much. I wanna do it every three weeks. Can you do that? I would go ahead and set up the repeat here and that would allow me to track it. And then down at the bottom, you have color code. And the color code is handy for when you're looking at a map view, being able to see uh, color coding your appointments so you can quickly see something that's significant about them. Now you can set up what that meaning is. All of my blues are big money makers. All of my yellows are annoying, whatever it is for you. You create your own color code scheme. And then when you're looking at the calendar view, you can see that color code and it can give you the information that you need. I have one person who times their their how many times they're grooming it's a every six weeks every four weeks every eight weeks they color code based on that but you could literally use these color codes for anything that you want for the appointment so that's the appointment detail i'm going to go ahead and save and now that appointment is saved and i'll be able to see that on the day of when i go to do it so let's go look at monday the 26th let's scroll over monday the 26th there should be information here's dora's and here's dylan dixon with Superman's appointment. So right there, I got his bath, extra care and shampoo. All right, so I've created it. Now let's say we need to reschedule an appointment or create a recurring one. I'm gonna jump over to one of my customers because this is the one that's set up for text messages for me. I've got an upcoming appointment that I'm gonna view. Let's take a look at this appointment and we're gonna reschedule it. So I get an information, I get a call from this customer and says, sorry, that time's not gonna work for me, we need to reschedule. So I'm gonna tap the reschedule button, and then that takes me back to the smart scheduler that says when's the next available time for this person. Nine o'clock on Thursday, looks good. I ask them, they say, yeah, nine o'clock sounds great. So I hit next, it says great, nine o'clock, it's going to reschedule them for that new time. Actually, I might have just rescheduled them <laughs> when they were previously scheduled. <laughs> Let's find a new time, not nine o'clock. Let's go a little further out. 
Friday at nine o'clock. That's what we want. We're going to move them out and it says, hey, you've changed the schedule. Do you want to notify the clients? I'm going to say yes. What happens is that it generates automatically for you a text message through the communications channel that says, hey, your appointment has been rescheduled. So you can reschedule appointments, couple of taps. It's very fast and easy. If you have the person on the phone, you just talk them through it. What do you need? When do you need to change it to? Yep, yep, yep. Done. You should have a text message while they're on the phone with you. Bzz, oh, I just got the text message. Cool. I've got my new appointment. And that way there's no miscommunication between when appointments need to be. I can also cancel this. I get a phone call. Hey, not going to work for me. I got to cancel that. I can just tap cancel. Yes, I want to cancel the appointment. And what should happen is they're going to get a text message saying that, oh, your appointment has been canceled. So you have that really quick confirmation, gives them confidence that you have accurately captured what's going to happen for them and that their information is being tracked effectively. All right, I'm going to go back to today and I'm going to look at our appointments. Let's go towards the end here. Mr. Bob Dillon, during the appointment, I've arrived on site now. I've gotten there. I'm ready to serve. I get the dog and I start working. I'm going to tap check in bottom right hand corner and it says, all right, this is an unconfirmed appointment. It hasn't been switched to confirmed, but I'm going to go ahead and say I'm here and we're starting. So I'm going to check in, hit OK. Now that I've checked in, I am working. I'm on the clock. I've got the dog in the truck working away. I'm washing the dog. I'm cleaning the dog. I go through all that stuff. I'm done with the appointment. Right inside the app, I'm going to tap on check out. This initiates the closing process. All right. So what does the closing process look like? Well, here's an invoice preview. I can see what services were ordered. So I have $110 for a full service. I can see what time I checked in at. I can apply a discount if there's a discount for some reason, subtotal tax, and I can set up the tax percentage in the back end previous to this. Any tip that they want to add, let's just say they really like that they want to add a $10 tip. So I'm going to put in custom. We'll put a $10 tip in there because these guys are feeling mighty generous. And so I've added my $10 tip. It's $120. Well, now I've got to close them out. I can check out and charge them later if I wanted to invoice them, but I'm going to go ahead and charge them now. Charge the appointment, yes. How are they going to pay me? Are they going to pay me with a credit or debit card number? Or maybe they have a card on file. If you've stored the card for this customer, you could just say, oh, just use the card on file. Press the button, boom, automatically processed. Or if you check out with cash or check, you even have an other if they give you Bitcoin or a gold coin, perhaps, for grooming their dog. But we're going to say for this case that we checked out with cash. They gave me $120. I hit save. Their invoice is now complete. If I tap on view invoice, it's going to show me here's the invoice. Check in, check out times there. I can tap that email receipt button and immediately send a receipt to the customer if they so desire. If I close this, I also can ask for a review. Now, this is a whole different feature, but I'll briefly mention what it does here. Asking for a review sends them a text message that says, how was our service today? You can customize what that message says. And based on how they respond, you can follow two different paths. I'm going to show you real quick in the auto message setup, auto message and, sorry, not auto message, review booster. These are the messages. How would you rate our service? If they give you a positive rating, then they get the positive feedback offer. Positive feedback offer says, hey, we're glad that you enjoyed it. Why don't you rate us on one of these sites? And you can put in Yelp, Facebook, Google, where they can go out and they can review you on a social media site. Or if you get negative feedback, you can send them a message. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Let us know what we can do to improve. And you can initiate a conversation with them to try to get the next service to be better. Now, you can decide what your level of positive feedback is, three and above, four and above, or if you're going for all fives, totally up to you which you set the trigger where it goes to positive feedback or negative feedback. Now, think just for a second. If you've got groomers under you and you're not the one going to every single appointment, how helpful it is to be able to know, am I providing great service even if I'm not there? I'm sending a groomer out, I'm trusting someone else to go out and represent my business, and then at the end, I'm sending them this quick survey that I'll be able to see the results in, and if there's a negative feedback, I can follow up and make sure that customer is satisfied before issues really get bad and they start ranting maybe online, without even mentioning to me that they have a problem. So that's the review feature. That's how you close out those appointments. So that would be how I close and, and, and pay out an appointment. And 
all the other information is available there. I'll be able to see when someone paid, all that comes through into reporting, which I'll cover in a different video for you, a different webinar of how reporting works. But that is the appointment feature. So I'm gonna jump back over here to our screen and ask if anybody has any questions about appointments. We talked about before the appointment, creating, rescheduling, setting up reoccurring appointments. During the appointment, you have time tracking. And then after the appointment, you can do payment processing, invoicing, and even send that review request if you need it. I'll pause, see if there's any questions from anybody. No questions? All right. And let's jump into our final outline here. Let's review what we've talked about today. We talked about the customer relationship management portion of MoGo. That's how you manage your client and information about them and their dogs. It's all targeted for mobile groomers. So it's tracking the information that's meaningful to you and your customer relationship management process. We talked about communications, how MoGo can help you communicate effectively with your client. That is a very important part of the tool and it's all tracked in one place. It's shared communication. It goes to their text message, it goes to their email so that you can have a positive communication with all of your clients. We discussed and looked at the master calendar and all the features that are available within that. Some of the really great nearby feature, the routing feature, smart scheduling, we looked at those. And then finally we looked at appointments and what an appointment holds and, and how that information is made available to you as the groomer so that you can be effective in going to your appointments and serving those appointments. So I hope this has been informative for you. Again, my name is Isaac Garcia and you can get a hold of me at Isaac at my moment.com or you can look me up on Facebook at get Mogo is a page where you'd be able to find me at. And I really hope that this has been able to show you some of the great features of Mogo. If you haven't started a demo yet, I'm just going to share with you really briefly our payment options. You can actually, if you go to our website and go down to pricing, you'll be able to see that for free on the free tier, you get a lot of opportunity to try out a good majority of the features. However, the features that I showed you here, map visualization, smart scheduling, nearby, auto message reminder, uh, two-way messaging back and forth, those are all paid features. So you'll really be able to track your clients and your pets and use the CRM, but if you really wanna unlock the power of MoGo, you really need to jump in at least at that beginner stage, which is your $39 per month level. Now let's say you are happy at that level, you love all the features, and you're a small operation. Then you can do that for up to 100 appointments per month. That's a lot of appointments. So if you're just getting started, getting your feet wet in the mobile grooming, use that $39 a month opportunity so that you can grow your business. What we believe will happen, as you decrease your administrative overhead and as you focus on serving your clients, what's gonna happen is you're gonna grow. And as you grow, we're available to grow with you. So if you get to more than 100 appointments per month, you can up MoGo, your subscription, to the next level, which is $69 per month. So when you jump to that level, that allows you to have unlimited appointments. You just throw them out there as many as you want. You can track unlimited appointments. Well, then this is working so well for you. We hope that you grow again. What's the next stage of growth? The next stage of growth is actually branching out to multiple trucks, multiple groomers, so that you're not just operating as one groomer, you now can operate as multiple ones. And then when you get into that phase, that's where we get you into the business elite level and you can work with us on pricing. And at that point, MoGo is providing so much benefit in helping you manage a fleet of mobile grooming that it, it is, it, it's better to have the conversation about the, the cost of benefit relationship because you're really gonna see a scaled value as you increase the number of trucks that you have. We have some clients who have lots of trucks and lots of groomers. And if you can imagine trying to manage all those processes, putting it in one place, putting the communication in one place so that it all can be tracked, it all can be systemized. And if you have a problem with a groomer maybe not working out or going off somewhere, then you can just bring in another person, load them up with a profile and off they go. It's really an amazing way to maintain your business continuity in the midst of changing personnel 
opportunities there. So I'll just close up then by saying this is Isaac Garcia. I really hope showing you these things have helped. And if you have any questions at all, please reach out to me. I'm happy to demo some of these features. If you need a demo for these features, you can also hit up Mogo Lily at our website or on Facebook. You can also ask for a demo there and she'll be able to help you as well. So please reach out if you have any questions. If there's anything I can do to explain these features better to you, I'm here to help. So I wish you all the best in your journey as a mobile groomer. And if Mogo can help you grow and scale your business, then we want to be the business partner with you that can help you to go and take your business to new heights. So thank you so much for your time during this webinar. And I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Bye-bye.